Well, hello, and good morning, every folks. It's already, uh, yeah, we got kind of, well, stuck in the middle of a fight last time. Uh, but yeah, long story short, uh, if you weren't here for last time, I don't really know why somebody would be skipping parts, but whatever. Uh, basically, there was a bridge here. It's gone now. They're like, man, we sure hate bridges, and then they got rid of the bridge. What douchebags? But it will be nice uh, sometime in the future if we can get a uh, upgraded Birdman. If we could have one of those, then we could ignore Reavers altogether. But anyway, at the moment, I was just moving everybody down. I don't think uh, it's if it's anything like last time. Uh, he's probably kept all of his birds kind of over here, uh, trying to snipe the base. So I'm assuming there probably won't be too much attacking. Okay, so Rick is guarding that place. Barbara is... Hang on, wasn't she in really rough shape last time? The status, she's okay. Okay, well, her team could do with a little bit of help, but she's okay. Only the Shaneberg was tough enough to survive. Only the Shaneberg. Any dangways, uh, so what I'm going to do here is probably have Butts go ahead and go this way, and... Hmm. Yeah, probably this way. Actually, let's go for location. And he's just, like, gonna sneak his way down this way. So he's not gonna go for the actual city itself, and he's gonna have to take a rest pretty soon here. Uh, what's Steve's team looking like? Because I know they've been on pretty hard defense. That part I do remember very strongly. So here's hoping that guy that we can recruit will just stay stuck to that mountain as long as I don't move anyone down there. That's what I'm kind of worried about uh, bringing butts down there. Uh, worried that he's gonna wind up in a situation where you know he ends up being forced to move. Oof. Okay, so they're taking taking some crits. That's not great. Okay. Lightning, lightning, lightning. Are you guys set to attack leader though? Because mm -hmm. I can't help but notice that you've hit everyone but their leader. Just a little bit of an observation here. Either way, uh, so they can fight off these guys with little to no issues. I wouldn't be too worried about that. So that's fine as it is. Yeah, that Mr. Belbodian, Belmachin, friggin' not Andorus over there is just gonna sit and do his thing. I guess these guys are just gonna go ahead and snipe them some ninjas. Good enough. Hmm. Alright, so yeah, I, I think Barbara's gonna wind up being pretty promising down the line. Uh, especially with how much damage they're doing. Like, granted, these are ninjas, so they're probably gonna be pretty freaking squishy, but still. Um, I will say, in general, like, she's actually starting to look pretty promising. I don't know if I have to have her as an archer to turn her into a Diana later. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure how a lot of the promotions work in this. But, uh, I suppose we will see when we'll see, won't we? Or maybe we won't, I don't know. But yeah, she's at least doing okay damage, you know. She does stuff sometimes. Uh, how underleveled is she, anyway? Hmm. Also, it's interesting how in this one, their uh, their feather hat looks more like a tail feather, whereas in a lot of the other ones, they kind of just look like a pinion. It's, uh, I guess that's just a matter of opinion. Ha 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 ha. It's a really bad joke the other day. That was, uh, that was specifically the... Like, they're like, okay, so... There's a, a difference in uh, feathers called pinions between uh, crows and ravens, so really the difference between them is just a matter of, of opinion. Yeah. I love bad puns. That's, that, that's pretty golden right there. Uh, actually, speaking of weird stuff, so there was a conversation that came up right before this. Um, which, by the way, a uh, random note here, a few people have pointed out that weird little line that shows up to the right on a lot of the transition screens. That just always shows up on the right. I don't really know why that is. If it really bugs folks, I can probably just get that edited out, but, you know, laziness and all that. But, uh, but yeah, no. It's just always there. That's not, um, that's not a recording thing. It's just always there. Stone of Quickness. Frickin' baller right there. So that's basically, I, I think that's an, an uh, agility up. Oh yeah, but anyway, so, of all the weird topics, uh, the topic of uh, Hercules came up. And there... It was, let's see, because it, it was, uh, let's see, it was uh, one of Royal's uh, videos there, because he, uh, he used an AC named Hercules to go beat some of the bosses and all that kind of thing, because he likes doing, like, cosplay runs and that kind of thing, uh, which basically, if you've never played AC, it's just like, it's Legos with mechs, more or less, in a really gritty setting most of the time, 
It's really, really good. You should go check it out. But anyway, so uh, it, specifically third gen is freaking amazing. But first and third are probably... Uh, no, everything first through third are probably like the golden age. And then weirdly enough, the one that I probably recommend new people to play the most is one of the ones from fourth gen. Anyway, whatever, getting off topic. So Hercules, right? So one of them's named Hercules. So he, you know, he goes and he builds this guy's thing. He goes through a bunch of challenges. And uh, <laughs> it's funny because he was saying like, oh yeah, you know, the original Disney Hercules, you know, or, or no, wait. Was, no, I don't think he mentioned Disney. I think I was mentioning Disney. Um, uh, but he was basically saying like, oh yeah, you know, Hercules had no challenges whatsoever. And it's funny because it reminded me of, uh, if you've ever seen the show uh, Once Upon a Time, which I'm assuming folks that aren't in a relationship or aren't, you know, with a, a family that watches, I think it's on ABC or something regularly, you probably wouldn't have seen it. Wait, Book of Earth. That sounds handy. Um, anyway, so I'm assuming you probably wouldn't have seen it. But it, the long and short of it is, it's like they take all the Disney properties and then later on just all the public domain properties and then everything else, and then they just like shove them into one story. Sometimes just like half the plot will happen just completely pulled out of someone's rear and that's it. And as much as you'd think that would be really stupid, it's surprisingly fun to watch just in terms of like, how are they possibly going to resolve this issue? Like, oh, somebody else has freaking superpowers. <laughs> it's, it's just hilarious freaking hilarious to watch um but yeah that, so it's funny because they literally out of nowhere they're like okay crap we uh we kind of had a whole underworld arc that we set up here who do we set up for this so they like break out hercules and i kid you not the dude dies in like the very first encounter that he runs into <laughs> and they they went and they made the worst hercules of like anything ever like it's just this guy that looks like he belongs in a boy band like, yeah, no, this is the strongest man ever. Like, no, this guy could not outbench a math teacher. Are you kidding me? There's nothing going on with this guy. Like, this, he has no muscles. <laughs> How is this guy Hercules? Um, so, yeah, it was uh, impressively sucky is what I'm going to go with. Um, so, yeah, this... Uh, it, yeah, they, I mean, fittingly, like I said, he just basically gets killed off immediately and then spends the next few episodes just moping. Like, they go to go to the underworld and all that, and, and he's basically just sitting there working at a dock. I'm like, oh man, you're the strongest, most heroic dude ever, why are you not doing stuff? Like, oh man, I suck. And my wife gave me, like, an angry glare at the time, because I literally yelled, yes, I agree, at <laughs> the screen. <laughs> it's like, exactly, you're terrible. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, no. Eventually came to the agreement that, yeah, that was the worst possible casting for Hercules they ever could have done. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, uh, so one topic that I promised uh, to cover, which, by the way, I should probably have Mr. Butts go over here, continue pretending to threaten this town so that he can finish off his TK squad. Maybe they'll pull off one of these to go defend it. But anyway. So, uh... Uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and attack now, so that you're not attacked in butt. So, what was I getting out of here? Right, so, um, so I mentioned training AIs as, uh, as part of my job description, which is weird. So, if anybody's ever done, like, just online freelancing in general, you wind up doing some pretty weird crap for a very crappy pay. And, uh, so one of the things recently was just, like, I think it's like 12 cents per video or something like that it, it varies it's like 12 to 40 cents per video um that you just like do a bunch of short clips uh where you're like where they're like okay we need to train our ai to recognize like you need to be holding a square object in one hand and like a cup in another and like maybe you need a cat sometimes you need a cat sometimes you need a dog sometimes you have to carry a cat outside surprisingly not a very good idea anyway um so yeah it's uh, it's interesting it's kind of interesting, and yeah, you just basically do all these things, and then they just, like, take all your recordings and whatever else. They're like, yes, our AI has become sentient and taken over Utah or some crap. Well, now to go train it to discover coffee cups. So, like, you know, you need to go have a coffee cup in your hand this entire time. Or you need to have a cylinder in your hand, or something like that. There's all manner of craziness that ends up resulting. What the hell are you? You are an enchanter. Also, you are apparently falling off your grid. What the hell? Oh, no, no, no. No, he's not. It's just because he's right there. Man, I thought it was, uh... 
early stage uh, Mecha story situation for a second. Yeah, so earlier on in development, uh, there was this uh, bug that would come up occasionally, wherein you would you would have characters that would show up like in the character selection screen, except it would kind of bug out and just cause people to just decide that they're suddenly following somebody else and walk straight off their little character pedestals, <laughs> which looked weirdly haunted. Um. So yeah, it, it was pretty hilarious. Um, I haven't seen that bug come up in any of the last like 20 or whatever builds, but uh, it was really funny to see. And uh, yeah, expect to see more of that soon, by the way. Um, I I mean, I've been wanting to cover a lot more things. It's just finances are friggin' terrifying. So that's always fun. But uh, I'm hoping with uh, new recent job opportunities that might be, uh, you know, hopefully easing up relatively soonish. Uh, eh, finances are a scary thing, man. Scary crap. Scary crap. I don't know if I'm actually talking to myself here, because uh, Twitch is completely freaking busted. And, uh, yeah, for some reason I can't log in on my phone. So I'm just using my, uh... I use uh, two laptops for work, generally. So, uh... I mean, yeah. You can make 40, you know, 12 to 40 cents per job work if you're doing multiple at once. <laughs> but anyway. Um... Yeah, I can't actually tell how many people are here right now. I'm assuming if it's anything like the norm, it's like four or five people that are just kind of like, Hello, we're here, but we will never say anything. Hello, lurkers. So, anyway. Usual kind of stuff, usual kind of stuff. So, let's see, what the hell is going on over here? Uh, did, did I ever enter this place? I don't know if I did. Hello, dude guy that looks like he belongs in the plane. So, yes. I got a war... Wentiness and Alba will suffer tremendously. Central region will get up without a fight. Yeah, that's why they they gotta go. Got to fix that problem. Also, wait a second. Her hair, her uh, little um, her hat. It switches directions in cutscenes. Look at this. Here, her little uh, her little feather is on the right. If we go over to the to the screen, or if we go to a fight with her, it shows up on the left. And now I kind of want to know what it shows up with in the uh, formation thing. Uh, status. Yeah, it, it's just backward. It, okay, it's supposed to be on the left. So on the portrait, it's on the left. On this thing, it's on the like just back. And then if we go into a fight, it's on. It's also on the left. But if we go into a cutscene, it's on the right. Maybe it's uh, you know, maybe it's a local, just like uh, some kind of uh, politeness thing. You gotta switch your hat around if you're talking to somebody. But then if you're talking to somebody from your team, you gotta. You gotta flop that crap around. Somehow feels like the kind of thing that would be in here. You know, that's one of those things that I actually always really was curious about with the series. Because they have so many different costumes and so many very specific things, and a lot of them are based off stuff that you'd expect to see from Eastern European history. Uh, specifically, I actually thought many of the events, uh, you know, that happened in the series might have potentially been off, uh, off of stuff from Lithuania at one point, because, a lo like, um, it, so originally I'm from there, right? And at some point, like, at some point, I was going through old history there, and I was going through um, through a bunch of different stuff. And I was looking at, uh, like, for example, when we had a uh, sort of, like, a national fair kind of thing. And I don't mean to say, like, I was in the country. I mean, this was, like, in California, and there's a pretty reasonable-sized community. Actually, it's weird. There's Lithuanians basically everywhere, but they just never show up. Like, they just sort of show up for holidays, and suddenly it's like, hey, there were a billion of us. And then there's, like, you just disappear. Actually, there's a, a joke that used to fly around the uh, California community. Like, you flip over a rock, you'll find a, 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 a Lithuanian, but if you ever look, you'll never find one. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, a lot of the traditional costumes and things, like, uh, for example, what um, uh, what the girls typically dress for, for uh, that there's this thing that's basically called the Day of the Young. It, it looks really, really similar. Like, everything minus the hat looks really similar to the to the archers from the series. <laughs> so that was specifically what I based that opinion off of. But, uh, yeah. A lot of stuff looks similar. Although it's not too surprising. I guess a lot of stuff did kind of uh, carry over to different places at that point. Um, but, they, I mean, they already said it was, uh, what was it, Bohemia or something like that, that this was based off of? Or, I know that uh, Luck specifically was based off the afternoon cleansing of, um, how was it? Of course, I'm gonna forget now. I forget a lot of things, but oh well. But specifically, 
it's uh, kind of amazing how every single game they kind of jump between different uh, different time periods entirely. Like, uh, at almost every single one, they'll end up starting at about the early end of the 11th century, more or less, equipment-wise. And then they'll just, like, add in some classical stuff in some of the games, and then they'll end up, like, jumping everything from, like, 13th to 15th per chapter. So by the end, like, all the Paladin stuff looks like you would have probably seen from decorative sets in the later 15th century, whereas, like, the basic knights would have been more of, like, the standard for the 14th. You know, that kind of thing. Let's see, attack the guys with more guys? Maybe I will attack the guys with more guys. Just just watch me do that. Actually, wait, I did not mean to make you camp. Great camp. Uh, I need you to go ahead and use some of your items. Because, yeah, this is a little bit hilarious, because Butts has thoroughly trounced the entire countryside to get over here. Ah, oh, man. So, it's kind of a jarring experience going from this to Ogre Battle Hard Type. Um, so that's the one for March of the Black Queen, which I really hope that Hammerfall ends up being for this. Because what they did... I mean, I, granted, I don't think the type of, the, of uh, rebounds they're going for is going to be the same thing. But it was this... Um, oh, yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and finish off this, this team over here. Actually, we're just going to let him stand still so he's not getting more tired. But yeah, so what they did is they... Uh, they basically made it to where you have to constantly swap out your units because everyone's taking more damage in general. So, like, you'll, for example, you'll go and attack a town and you're going to need everybody to take that town because even your strong units are going to be taking enough damage uh, to where it legitimately becomes a threat. So it's it's really well done in that regard, I have to say. So anyway, anyway. It's good stuff, it's good stuff. So, let's go ahead and get rid of Mr. Raid here. Spray him with swords to the face. Kind of feel like I would have wanted Steve to be doing this personally, but you know what? It feels like at this point, Raid is so much of a dick that Steve wouldn't even bother going out to meet him. He's like, I just don't want to see a stupid face again. Where are the reinforcements? Oh, gee. Did you get betrayed now? So, what's Western, Western Division doing? Stabbing you in the butt. No reinforcements were sent, the Western Division remains. Y'all are bones. Wait, Ankaseth, uh, that's... Yeah. Eh. Wait a minute. That's legit what he expected? <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I need to remember to overdub that line right there. <laughs> oh, man. There... Okay, has anybody... I don't know if anybody here has seen... Um... Uh, Helsing abridged, <laughs> but there, there's a part where they're going like, "Where, where are all our helpers? Where's, where's everybody? Where's this particular army right here? They pissed off before the fight even started." <laughs> uh, that's pretty great. I uh, can't depend on anybody. I don't know. Maybe if you weren't such a douche, what was that? Now you're gonna get stabbed in the butt by butts. Thanks to you, my life's a ruin. Drama queen, fight me. I'll take care of you myself. Okay. Wondry, wondry, scrub. All right, so I'm already seeing what's going on here because a they've got multiple attacks all over the dang place. B we should be able to use the summon, and attacking the leader might not necessarily work. I'm gonna pause real quick to finish explaining because they've got the two paladins in the back, and I know they can do their healing crap. So yeah, they've got plenty of healing going on. They've wasted their healing this time. I don't know if they've only got one or two attacks. Uh, ooh, holy. Moly. Right. Let's pendra this crap. The wind? Why not? Okay, and. Oh, we gotta recharge our retreat? I did not know that. Okay, apparently you cannot retreat if you use your pendra. Good to know. Uh, they did a fair bit of damage, though. I think with a heal pack they should be able to keep this thing going. I actually probably just use the leaf for now. I want to do that because yeah, the leaf will fix him up. There, they took a hit, but they're all right. He took most of the damage, so. Oh, this is why I stick to these, like little cheap garbage things so far because they do the job just fine. Because unfortunately, if I'm gonna make this work, I'm gonna kind of have to have him do it himself. Uh, the only other option that I can kind of see here is if I have him move down here and take this town, then there's a chance that the AI won't aggro. So I might do that. Mr. Streams, well, I'm 
I'm sorry, I know life has been all mean like lately, so it's been there's been less than usual. <laughs> sorry about that. Um but yeah, life does that sometimes. It's a little bit of a douche some days. Anyway, I don't think we're gonna end up needing to take that town because dude's about to get nuked. Dude! Yes, yeah, so once again, beaten by that exact item that you didn't get at the very start of the game. It's a wonder why nobody else got one. How the hell are you going to change this thing? Dangerous as hell because of stuff. Your victory is useless. Bye, douche. I like to think all these guys then decided to join us because they're like, yeah, that guy was a dick. I mean, anybody asked for a bathroom break, he just punched them in the junk. So, don't know what to do there. Let's see, in March of the Black Queen, you can spam a lot of cards. Hell yeah, you can. Oh, it was a fire drake. Okay, I didn't know if it was like some weird version of the ogre or if it was the fire drake. But that works out great. Yeah, no, in, uh, yeah, in March of the Black Queen, actually, I, I like to refer to that as the Joker cannon. Because any time you could just go mass a bunch of cash, just sit, sit in the map, leave it running for a while. Mass a bunch of cash, then essentially use that to buy Joker cards. Then just go keep doing that until you have something like 50 Justices or whatever else, and then you just run to a fight. It's like, Justice, 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 Justice. And I love how Justice is just ice, and it hits them with a bunch of ice. <laughs> <laughs> ah, wouldn't have gained ref regained our freedom. I mean, you guys hit like a frickin' truck. I'm pretty sure you could have overthrown these guys, but whatever. Let's see, what are you planning to do now? Like, how about joining us? Like, dude, uh, yeah, have to decline. Gotta go rescue our other dudes. These guys are kind of reminding me of the friggin' Madokins uh, from uh, Abe's Odd World right now. Let me fight with you. I can't bear it any longer. Yes, we got the dude. We got the dude. I totally forgot about this guy. You gotta seek revenge. Aren't you the leader? And ready to discuss this matter with the others. So, everyone else pissed off. Your help will be valuable. Okay, yes. Very, very much so. So, what we're going to do here, uh, we're probably presumably going to go find um, Mr. Whatever, the, whatever his face Iron Hammer guy is. Wait, Mount Ithaca, isn't that... Isn't that in Lucked? Anyway, so we're going to find that guy. Gonna go friggin' punch him in the junk and probably throw him in a corner and then give his team to Mr. Bad here? See, did something happen in the Central Division? He received orders from HQ to head west and prepare for the invasion. Uh, okay, so Lotus is invading now? But they're not invading? Official statement from HQ. Wait a minute. I thought you were HQ. Oh, no, 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 no. They're like the top guys for HQ. Let's see, we'll accept nothing less than unconditional surrender from the Western Division. I'm willing to use the full potential of the Mosquitoes to liberate the Western region. If that's their intention, but dude, I can only cut down so many guys at once. Uh, any among the army who believe that they can accomplish anything... Okay, we are going down a dark road here. Great. In order to lead a large group of occasional occasions to accept things that go against your beliefs. Okay, I'm seeing the problem now. Hmm. They left the revolution out the people to nerd them. Go to the castle and find your own answer. That's some Bloodborne crap right there. Uh, what needs to be done now? What do you want to do? You have to decide on your own. Well, geez. Uh, are you kicking us out? I was ordered to use the Nerdomies to fight Lotus. I understand his forms, but nonetheless went against the... Okay. Oh! Hmm. Okay. I mean, dude, you convinced us to join this crap, and now you just bailed. We are running a tight ship over here. Alright, so he wants to stay with her. Yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> you join us, please. 
like will take anybody. <laughs> See, thanks to do the best I can support you. Um, yeah. Neither can be said to be wrong, and I, I don't know, I kind of feel like you're shooting everybody in the foot by deserting at the moment, but whatever works. Let's see, bad stat growth seems not very good. Doesn't matter. Has Fatal Dance. Okay, so, wait. You told me to go to... Which freaking place am I supposed to go to, then? Alright, whatever. First of all, save it. Second of all, let's uh, take a look at these two new dudes. Did they come with squads? Uh, no, they didn't. They're just going it solo. Okay, so... Ooh, hello! So, we've got back row Firestorm. Hell frickin' yes. Oh, we've got Vad... Oh, man. Dude, this guy... How is this guy not... Uh, this is exactly the same crap that, um... Oh, uh, what's-his-face, uh, uh... Andorus comes with in, um... In, uh, what's it... Oh, dang it, I'm really bad with words today. Uh, they come in uh, Lucked. Uh, the Troino Scales, the Thunder Chain, and some other crap. I mean, it's just what he does. Okay, so we've got two back row beasts right now, so... so we've got Aisha, so he wants to go hang out with her. Oh yeah, we probably have to go bring her back to that one map to see if we can find her team, huh? Alright, so we've taken casualties everywhere, so Troy's gonna need fixing... Rick needs fixing. Um, I almost want to say I'm probably going to get rid of Amanda. Uh, what's your situation? Yeah, 7. So she's horribly underleveled. Uh, Katreda is at 8, but she's still holding up slightly better. So I'm going to replace Amanda. Uh, I mean, I guess Troy's holding up. Nancy's had her shining moments. Rick has been a beast. Uh, Liam... Hmm... And attempted to shelf her for the moment. Uh, Barbara is showing potential now, so I'm gonna keep her around. We've still got trade fodder, we've still got Dio. It's really just extras that we need at the moment. Uh, we need more fairies to round out the squad. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to a revive map. Well, that's basically any map. Uh, go get these guys all patched up. Uh, and then go and find some random encounters so that I can go and recruit them and... Yeah, then we uh, should be able to get those two guys some teams. So, Alright, let's do that. First... Was it... Hmm... Was it Lowlands where I got Aisha? I forget. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go and investigate a few areas to see what we can get. So I'm gonna go here first. Alright, so as far as dispatching teams goes, let's see. First of all, Rick. Now, right, you go ahead and uh, get yourself all patched up over there. Everybody's... Wait, what? Wait a minute. Oh, that's because she's using basic soldiers, that's why. Alright, you go to Prigley as well. Prigley as a cactus. Or heart. Um, but yeah, this was not the map I thought it was. Uh, does anybody remember you know, what the Aisha, Aisha map was? Right. Who else do we want to dispatch here? I think Leah was missing some dudes. No. Who else had casualties? Because I know there were some. Yeah, Barbara. Now, I guess the big question is, do they still lose experience? If I go over here, if I go to this and I go to status... Is he... Okay, no, he still retains his experience. So it's more difficult to revive them uh, than it was in the last game. And there's actually a permanent punishment for failure. But still, you know, we're uh, we're still at least uh, able to retain XP. Because, yeah, that, the main downside in March of the Black Queen was just that they would lose all their accumulated XP if they died. But then they'd just be perfectly fine the next fight. But uh, any dang ways is allowed for making some really OP units anyway. So as far as Steve goes, we probably should have him just traveling around, hopefully traveling along the roads. Uh, so the whole thing with traveling along the roads is, yeah, um, apparently fairies and stuff like that will spawn, or not so more frequently, more so like they'll just spawn period on roads. Uh, same applies for Hawkman or anything else, and since I'm able to uh, basically cheat in any class, 
any unit recruited is just turned into a fairy or gremlin. Um, though I will say, going forward, I'm not even sure the gremlins are as OP as I thought they might have been. So, either way, that's, you know, the rules of the run and all that kind of thing. So they'll automatically follow roads. I'm going to try to give them as long of a path as possible. Actually, I probably should have done this in a completely different manner. But I don't do smart. Smart is for smart people. Let's see, by the way, if tactics under PSP, finish lore route before, still the chart start chart before, do I do POTD or all the side quests first, plan to do three routes plus coda. Uh, you probably want to go and do all of the other routes you want to do first, and then just, uh, you, the I ideal with Palace of the Dead, because of, um, because of the way that the shortcuts work, is basically just to, okay, can't dispatch anyone else, uh, the ideal is basically just to wait until you're going into coda, then do Palace of the Dead the first time, which uh, gives you a book which allows you to make shortcuts uh, to come back uh, any other times. If you go into Coda after completing it once, you're allowed to use the shortcuts to skip to play. Like, there's three different... Uh... Oh, wow, Blue Dragon! What are its eye colors, though? Is it some Yu-Gi-Oh crap? I don't know. And they ran. <laughs> like, oh man, who's this chick? Bye. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so you want to do all that. I, let's see, do you choose Princess or Lord first? Uh, generally speaking, I go with the uh, the Princess first. And then just, uh, usually when going back through different routes, I just have Venom do another class. And then just, like, train him up as all the different classes. And then once he has enough skill points to go through, just, like, sweep all the classes, pick up all their side abilities, then you just go back and you make him into a Lord, and he can just be busted as all hell. <laughs> it's pretty great. Like, despite his mediocre stats, I've made some uh, some videos to that effect. But yeah, he's like if if you uh, if you give him a minute, if you give him a bit of thought as far as how you put him together, he is hilariously busted. Like specifically, you can, one one of my favorite recent ones was like if you take give him a heavy axe build, uh, heavy armor, give him uh, the ninja abilities as well as the swordmaster abilities, um, and uh, and combine that with like you can combine it with berserk. Can combine it with any other things, and you can just basically have a heavy armor berserker that's allowed to ignore terrain and self buff, <laughs> which is pretty fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's let's see, that's one of them. There was one that I called the strategic nuclear gimp, uh, that's basically like a full evasion set plus heavy armor, well, an almost full evasion set with heavy armor put in there. So he's got just enough evasion to pretty much get maxed evade in most situations. Uh, then. Uh, running uh, Art of War with uh, with whips, augment dark, and um, uh, and a, uh, a a whip earring, and basically what this creates is a situation where oh yeah, and max TP three. So if you do that, you wind up with a situation where he scales crazy high uh, with one of his moves. So oh wait, so you don't do POTD first? Uh, you do POTD once because you're expected to go back there multiple times. You do it once, you get access to the shortcuts, and then you trigger Coda. Because if you uh, if you end up uh, triggering it before you go into Coda, then you can literally just jump back in, into Coda at any point. They're like, okay, you know, you have Palace of the Dead unlocked. If you were to go back and do Hanging Gardens again... So, sorry, okay, so it's a bit of a complicated thing to explain. So, as soon as you go into, into Hanging Gardens, you basically lock in that particular timeline as your Coda timeline. So as long as you don't do Hanging Gardens, and you just jump back to Coda, you can keep whatever progress you had saved for some previous ones. So if you have some perfect timeline you had set up, do Palace of the Dead once, jump into Coda, then you can do every other route up to the Hanging Gardens. Uh, so as long as you don't see the ending with that run, you don't overwrite your previous Coda. Uh, which, again, it's... I don't know why they did it that way, but... You know, such is life. So yeah, doing that, you're able to uh, to basically skip doing it multiple times. You're allowed to use all the shortcuts, and it's just easier that way. So, there we go. There we go. Hopefully I haven't scared off everyone with that ex explanation. See, internet stop for a while. Can you repeat? Okay. Don't... Uh, or rather, do Palace of the Dead... <sighs> okay. Let's put it this way. Do the timeline that you want to keep, okay? It's so like, if you're happy with your current timeline, and you're just going through previous timelines for the sake of, like, going and getting new characters or whatever, just go through Palace of the Dead and jump into Coda. The moment you complete Hanging Gardens, uh, that's when it 
basically saves it. So that is the timeline that Coda uses from that from that point onwards. So every time that you hop back to Coda, that is the save that it will load. Uh, so, uh, so for example, if you've done Palace of the Dead, you're able to go in and you're able to use the shortcuts. Uh, so yeah, if you want to finish the three routes, like if you want to see the endings for all of them, yeah, do the three routes first. I would recommend doing the temples at least once uh, before doing that, uh, just because they give you most of the crafting books in the game. Uh, even if you don't get the uh, the drops going through them, you still get most of the useful ones just as boss drops now. So you can get basically all of them. So uh, yeah, that basically keeps you from running into future scaling issues and all that kind of thing. Like Really, that's the only way you can screw yourself is if you have overleveled characters and you go back in time and the game switches to New Game Plus and you're like, oh crap, what do I do now? So that avoids that situation. Alright, did I revive her dudes? Yes, I did. I think that's everyone revived. So at this point, I'm just going to have them run in circles real quick. And uh, hopefully you get some more random encounters. Because yeah, every random encounter I can turn into a fairy. Uh, but yeah, so so yeah, do temples first, then uh, then do the route that you want to keep for Coda, and then from there uh, you go ahead and do uh, Palace of the Dead, or do Palace of the Dead before you go into Hanging Gardens for that one. And yes, it is a completed a complete cluster clock as far as the way they implemented it. If you've ever wondered why, it's only because that part was originally DLC, so it was kind of awkward for them to put in there. Uh, if you're familiar with any of the ways that Bethesda had to uh, implement some of their DLCs in the past, that basically gives you an idea of what, you know, what may have caused that. Because, like, they had a bunch of situations where they're like, hey, here's all this cool new stuff. Also, here's, like, 50 hoops you have to jump through in order to get it, because we couldn't technically mess with any of the original game files except for the stores. So we can add some stuff to stores, but other than that, you're going to have to go through the entire DLC to get your friggin' light machine gun. Anyway, anyway. So yeah, Temple Before Coda is probably recommended, yes. So you heard you have to beat someone, and you do. So, there we go, we got a furry, Gary. It's at least one. Anyway, so, so you heard you have to beat someone. So yeah, that that's what you do for, for that one. So, once you get to floor 100, oh, Book of Bane. You got a friggin' evil book from recruiting a fairy, good to know. So let me go ahead and save it just in case it crashes. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a you get Nibith on the hundredth floor. Like I would say it's a spoiler, but it's not a spoiler. Um, but yeah, you you have a bunch of cutscenes that trigger the first time, which are kind of annoying to do a second time. Like for example, if you've never done Palace of the Dead, and then you trigger Coda, you'll have a situation where you'll basically go into there and you have to every time that you go back to Coda, you have to re unlock all that stuff. <laughs> As encountered a wild. Thunder Dragon, we couldn't fit the letters in there, so it's stacked up on top of itself. But yeah, so if you end up beating him, you get Secrets of the Master, which specifically, if you get it in one vision, is, I would argue, my favorite crafting thing. It's actually either first or second favorite crafting thing. It's got friggin' Crusagrim in there, which, uh, it, like, it's a relatively high level thing, but uh, he wanted to put in a uh, Symphony of the Night reference. So if you've never played that game, there's a rare weapon you can get, and it's funny because you can actually get multiple copies of this thing from just like this random chuckle bucket enemy that's relatively late in the game, and it's just like, it's a sword that swings like a hundred times, <laughs> and he did kind of a similar thing, where it basically swings two tiles in front of you and does double damage. It's got no armor penetration to speak of, for the most part, but still, it's just, uh... It's still fun. It's like dual Crusagrims is one of the most hilarious things that you can do. Like dual Crusagrims plus instill allows you attack twelve allows you to attack twelve times in one turn potentially. Uh so okay, final word, what I would recommend, do temples once, then go back and do all the routes you want to do. And then once you like once you have a storyline where it's like, okay, I'm happy with everything that happened here, I'm happy with who lived or died, uh, please bear in mind that for the coda stuff uh, the Zenobians that have to survive. Uh, you just need Kenobis, Murden, um, uh, Gildas, and, um, uh, and Kashua, and Vice. As long as they are in your party, they count as alive. So even if they died in the storyline, don't worry about it. They'll just have slightly less dialogue. Uh, but again, it doesn't really matter that much. Because usually the important stuff they'll still end up saying. 
It's just like a few little extra quips. I, I guess they just want it as a reward if you somehow got all of them through with one run, even though that's not exactly practical, but whatever. So, okay, so yeah. If you do all of that... Dang it, I got off track. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, Crusagrim's OP. Uh, it, I mean, it's ridiculously hard to get, so it's kind of strong. It, honestly, after the armor rebalance, it's, it's a lot weaker than it used to be, but god, that thing's fun. Uh, unless you mean the uh, the Symphony of the Night version, in which, yes, that thing is retardedly hard. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was the closest thing. It's just, yeah, there, there was a sword that kind of looked out of place. Like, in, in the original, it really made no sense, because they just had one that looked like a frickin' lightsaber. It's just like, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm your weird, like, laser falchion. How can I, uh, how can I help you? So he turned it into the, the Crusagrim instead. But, uh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Anyway, so, to get back to what I was saying, yeah, do the temples once. That way you get all your, uh, your crafting books for all of your at least baseline elemental stuff. So that'll open up your options a whole lot. Uh, bear in mind, each uh, temple does have a third third or fourth uh, optional book that you can get. Like, for example, with the... Uh, there's a few that I remembered in which, uh, let's see, in the Earth one, there is a, a thief that shows up knocked out as a zombie. That one, if you end up exercising them, I believe that's the knife book. You get the gun book from a fusilier in the Fire Temple. Uh, there's just a, I think it was a, a male fusilier that spawns on the left side of this bridge map. Uh, the, let's see, there's a knight, and I want to say, whichever one it is on the bottom left there, uh, that's the one that's, uh, that has uh, the advanced sword book, uh, but yeah, all of your armors and everything else, that's going to be dropping from the bosses. Right, so we got at least two units here, they're definitely taking a hot minute to spawn. As they, as I've been told several times, even with an entire army doing this, it sometimes takes a minute to get random encounters. But yeah, so do temples first. Get your books. You know, there's guides out there as far as getting all of them. I think I have a, li a link in the One Vision guide as well. If not, I have to double check to put that in there. Uh, but yeah, bear in mind, uh, there is a spreadsheet guide out there for Palace of the Dead. Uh, that thing is occasionally off with some items, so if you find yourself not getting something after 40 attempts... That probably means there was a mistake in there, which it's not a surprise. There's kind of thousands of drops that he has in there with specific tiles and units. There was bound to be some mistakes somewhere. As far as I know, there's only two. Do you want to unlock Azelston and Deneb too? So you're probably better off doing that in doing in that in that first route as well. So would recommend doing temples. Uh, then while doing temples, you can get access to all the dragons you need. Uh, like I think the Water Temple has a Hydra. All the others have their respective elemental dragons. And then once um, uh, once you have one of each, just bring them to the store, buy five of them from Deneb's shop. Uh, if you want to do the glass pumpkin thing, uh, just recruit, uh, I think it was a, a ten Cyclopses or something like that. I, I forget what the numbers were for that. But just recruit Cyclopses. It's way faster than... Um, uh, just recruit them and sell them to the store. You can just buy glass pumpkins at that point. Uh, and then for Azelston, yeah, that I would just keep a guide handy for that, because that guy's storyline is a foster clog. Like, it's... Azelston and Ravnus, uh, those are two that he has mentioned are going to have easier requirements in the future. Because you can tell that they're DLC characters. Like, hey, check it out, we got these fancy guys. You gotta do all this stuff in a very specific order, and you gotta check the news, and you gotta babysit them, like world's most overprotective mother in order to make sure they don't die every five seconds. Like, Ravnus in particular, I never end up getting her on any route on purpose, because she, she's, like, she's just frustrating. It's like, lady, how hard is it not to die every ten minutes? Why, why do you have to die all the time? <laughs> just, like, just avoid wandering armies. It can't be that hard. Let's see, is it possible to do temples in law? Yes, temples are possible in all of them. Because uh, Old Man Winter survives in all of them, and as long as you have one of the sisters that made it through, through the entire story, which, unless you've purposely gotten Olivia killed, you have one of them. <laughs> so, it's like, as long as you have one, you're good to go. I, I think in the original, uh, in the SNES version, I think you have to have all of them. Um, but yeah, no, you, you, just need, uh, you just need one. 
And then if you want a fifth one, uh, Yuria can be a uh, shaman as well. Because, you know, they all the characters that they added in for the DLC, they're just like, yeah, they, they got all these new powers too. Check it out. Check out my new character. They're so special, you guys. They have all these things, and they're all super cool and better than everybody. <laughs> Man. Th there was so much of that with the remake, it just kind of cracks me up. It's like, the original seemed, like, the, the SNES version, it seemed like there, there was so much weird, like, grittiness and whatever else, and, you know, I, I just personally really liked that tone, and then there were so many cases, and you can tell this in, in the uh, interviews that they did, where they just got way too in love with their, uh, with their characters. <laughs> He's got way, way, way too into it. So you haven't experienced the awesomeness of uh, Magic and Tactics Over? What? How have, how have you gotten to that point without using any? Let's see, Ravenous is easy in one vision. Well, easier, yeah. I mean, she's easy to save in the story, because it's a lot. You don't have to rely on, like, 11% sleep chance to friggin' deal with her. Though, to be fair, I guess in the original she was a lot less threatening. Just because you could potentially uh, just get a couple levels over uh, over the AI, and it's like, okay, check it out, she does no damage now. But, by that being said, you know, she's easier to get in OV for sure. Not to mention she actually tends to keep herself alive during her fights better. Uh, oh yeah, so. So, funny thing. Uh, funny thing on all that is just, yeah, if you don't check the news, like, after every single fight... There's a very real possibility you're going to miss, like, one of the, I think you need, like, four different steps to, to recruit her. And with Azelstan, there's not even any hints. It, it's literally just like, oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I just, uh, just went ahead and exploded for no reason because nobody was looking at me today. Like, he just won't show up in some cases. Like, yeah, let's see. Specifically, you have to read about him first. You have to get that whole mystery story going. Uh, then you have to, uh... What was it? Uh, you have to... Am I not going to get any more random encounters? I just maxed out or something. So yeah, you have to read a story. Then you have to visit uh, visit one of the dungeon maps. Then you have to go back to a town. Then hope that you landed on the right, uh, right like, overworld situation for him to appear there in town. Then you fight the most hilariously level and balance situation they've ever put together in the entire game. Because at that point, odds are your characters are around level 14, and those guys spawn in at, like, level 25. So, <laughs> there's, you're completely effed in the A if you're playing the original, and if you decide to, you know, go do one more story thing at all, and do anything other than grind for another 10 levels, you basically just completely delete Azelson. So you haven't tried Summon to Draconic? Yeah. Those are, yeah, those are harder to come by for sure. But you do actually get them in, um, you do get access to them early now, by the way. Uh, so you may have noticed during the story you picked up, uh, I think it's like Ars Magna. Uh, so you get a crafting book that allows you to craft some of the harder to acquire stuff. It's just you can't actually use it until way later in the game. So it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, you know, I had this thing the whole time. You know, good that I can finally use it now. So, I, okay, I think those few characters I recruited might have to be enough. I'm going to give it one more day here, but I think that's probably going to be enough. Let's see. A broken camp. Yeah, there's nobody else is spawning in. Where are all the Pokemans, dang it? Wanna go, uh, wanna go get me some friggin' fairies. Like I said, at least we got two. It's something. It's enough to make another team at any rate. See, which, which route has the most interesting story? Uh, that depends on who you ask. Folks that really like a like a good guy, you know, FFT-esque story generally like the chaos route. Uh, folks that like a uh, very like just pretty you did everything wrong route uh, that would be uh, that would be law. And then my personal favorite is just the everybody did everything wrong route. Like just everybody, not just your character, just like every okay. Let's put it this way. Law is like, your character did bad stuff for the right reasons. Chaos is you did good stuff, uh, you know, but it was kind of misguided. Neutral is just everybody did their best, but screwed up anyway. And that's my personal favorite, because it just seems the most realistic. It's like, everybody has their moment. Like, everybody, almost everyone in the story, you know, they did their thing, they did their full story arc, 
and then they just got screwed over anyway. Like it, it's just so realistic. I loved it. Yes, very join the battalion. Good to know. But yeah, so my personal favorite is like especially what happens uh, if you look at what ha happens with Hector in every route. If you end up running into him in neutral, it's just oh man. Just such thing like, man, you were such a character in the other routes, and here you're just like getting publicly executed in you know, like in game. It's just like wow. <laughs> that's that's rough, man. Like he that's the thing, he's such a character in some of the other routes, and then it just he has so minor spoilers here. Because you probably don't remember who Hector is. Um, OV does actually give him unique armor because he's one of the most interesting characters in the game. Um, because, yeah, it seemed weird. Before he was just like a generic knight, and yet almost everybody else <laughs> was getting unique sprites but him. He's like, nope, just basic guy. Doesn't matter. He, friggin' head of a famous house? Doesn't matter. Anyway, so... So, there, so yeah, it, like in one of the routes, you know, he's... He has this whole interesting dynamic with him and his dad doing this... Doing like a whole background betrayal kind of thing, which... I only mention because it's only hinted at. If you skip through the text, you can miss it. But it's really interesting how their thing ends up coming together. In one of the other routes, it's just like he's on a mad revenge spree because, well, you kind of killed his wife early on in the game. <laughs> on another one, um, I mean, on, on neutral, and this is the part with the minor spoilers there, like, he, he just shows up halfway through. Like, the second that you go through, uh, into neutral... He's just there with the rest of his team, the ones that would cause you so many issues. Like he's one of the hardest fights on one of the, on the two other routes, and then on that one, let's see, it's the newbie that got Yunin imprisoned, or the noble that got Yunin imprisoned, exactly. And what did he do immediately after? Like, yeah, sure, he imprisoned the uh, Yunin, but did you get all of the uh, did you get all the dialogue with uh, with uh, was it uh, Yunin and the ninja guy in the next fight? Because there's a ton of stuff that happens over the course of the next three fights that just, like, never gets mentioned. Like, it doesn't get properly mentioned in the story, but you can, uh, <laughs> It's like, if you end up going and, like, looking at the dialogue and looking at everything else, like, Dude! Dude, this could have gone so differently! This guy's awesome! But anyway. Yeah, easily one of my favorite characters in the story. Actually, I think Dude's probably my actual favorite character in the story. Aside from Tammuz. Okay, he's second place. Tammuz is first place. Just because in the original game, they're like, this guy is absolutely terrible, but he keeps surviving somehow. <laughs> and that's all the backstory he gets. He's just the guy that refuses to die, despite the fact that he's absolutely awful. Ah, anyway. Let's see, because I get to kill all... Get more items or turret. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Uh, but yeah. So... So anyway, yeah, in neutral, he's just he's the very first fight you run into in neutral. And so, oh wow, I guess we get all the fairies now. I guess they all suddenly realize what we're trying to do here. And it's this really interesting encounter. It's not too much of a spoiler because there's, you know, it's like, you could tell it's one of these moments where they just, they weren't too sure what to do with him story-wise, so they just gave him an awesome ending. Because he's just there with the rest of his team, like the, like I was saying earlier, the ones that caused so many problems in the other routes, like, the, you know, there were some of the bigger boss fights and everything. And they're just there, in the most basic equipment in the game. And so, uh, they, you know, they've got starting equipment, only two, uh, two pieces of equipment each. And, um, and Leonard goes up to them. He's like, okay, look, I respect you guys, but you are our enemies, so here's the deal. You got some basic equipment. You get to fight for your life, otherwise this is an execution. It's an execution you get to fight your way out of if you if you win. So that's the deal. <laughs> and then you get into a fight, and it's like, dude, that's so cool, actually. <laughs> it's like, the, like he actually recognized that this guy is so much of a player in the other uh, the other routes. Also, yeah, I should not have taken on this fight. That's oh, this is gonna go badly. Okay, well, Ninja Guy, I'm not super worried about, but yeah, go for a weakest. I have a feeling they're gonna just die here. Probably should have handled this differently. But yeah, so it, it's just, it's a really cool setup. Like, especially the fact that you only get to send in, like, three units on the rest of Leonard's team. Uh, I think they just did that just in case you're really under level or something. They didn't want you to get screwed over with the insta-fight. 
But yeah, that's easily, easily, easily my favorite route. Just because of the cool crap like that. It's just like, everybody does their best, but they, they end up getting screwed anyway. And surprisingly, that's the only one where the Duke actually gets to show off his full plan and take effect. And, I mean, crap actually works at first. <laughs> like, it actually goes a lot different than the other routes. So, so yeah, we definitely recommend uh, saving that one. Uh, usually, people recommend doing Law uh, last, just because that's the one where you can get the most units, you can keep the most uh, most people alive in story. It's kind of weird, because it's kind of the one where you do the whole genocide thing. But yeah, you know, stuff. See, in Chapter 4, where you can avoid battles if Denim is unarmed, yeah, that, that's another one that I really liked. I also really liked where in the remake they added the option to... Um, uh, save, what's-her-face, uh, Darza's wife, I forget her name. It's a friggin' Darza wife. You know, that one. So yeah, let's, uh, go ahead and go and do area investigation here, because I think this is the one I need to go to. But yeah, I, I really like that they added the option to save her. Because it was kind of jacked up in the original, let's not even lie there. Uh, in the original, like, they basically said partway through the story, like, oh yeah, Ladies Preggers and leading the team here. Now go Shank. Dude. I don't, I don't wanna do that. Why why would why would you do that? Why would you make me do this? <laughs> and they just do. Alright, so just so you know, I'm not gonna be doing the same thing with going through every single map a million times. I'm just gonna set these guys to do their little triangle route, and I wanna see if this is the map where Aisha is supposed to go. Um one one of the tips I was given going into this is to have every one of the special characters go back to the place where you recruited them, since apparently they get special stuff. And she did mention to look around the map for the rest of her team, so I'm assuming they're going to be here someplace. So worth giving it a little bit of a look. And yeah, that, the whole reason I want to have more guys back up here is I can probably retire my my main teams, as it were, or some of my original teams. Uh, and basically just use that to be able to, uh, to have kind of backup units in case, you know, some of these guys end up getting squashed and all that kind of thing. It's good to have reserves. Let's see, I like the choice where you get uh, the Princess of Lord. Yeah, it, interestingly enough, that actually, you may notice going through it, like, wait a minute, the, the questions are different. Uh, the questions actually are decided based on the story, which could have been handled a little bit better because the uh, decisions that actually affect how that how that part goes are not ones that you'd probably expect. Like, for example, the one where they're basically saying, like, oh yeah, you know, either I did what I had to do, or I, you know, I never abandoned you kind of thing. That's actually affected by when you're talking to the old guy in the temple, and uh, he asks you, are you willing to go to war against your sister? And basically, that's that's the one that decides it. So, if you say that you, uh, that you were willing to, uh, to do that, she actually won't show up uh, during the fight against Lance. She just won't be there. Um, and then during, let's see, during that one, I think you have to say I only did what I had to do. And then if you if you said that you couldn't do it, then she will be there during the fight. And then I think the answer changes to uh, that uh, you never abandoned her. But anyway, it's just uh, just interesting that they had that in there. So either way, let's go see if Aisha has friends. I think this is the map. Again, I don't know for sure. This kind of sort of looks like it. Oh, hello, Bell Mocking Guy. I used to live peacefully here with my family. The Lotus attacked, and everything changed. I have nowhere to go. I want my home back. You have a home right there. I mean, you're living in it. It's currently your place of residence, so... Oh, crap. Do so you really like where, where she cried? Yeah, it's the, the one point in the story where she put down the idiot ball for a second. It's like, what, I had to make a picture a little while ago. It was basically her holding up a giant ball and says, this is my favorite idiot ball. It's because, uh, as, as one guy put it a while ago, it's just like, she's the only character in the story that, rem that just like, is kind of utterly un inconsistent at times. Like, she just co completely loses her freaking mind. It's like, she will always betray you, no matter how the story is going, no matter how the war is going, no matter how everything is going. She will always leave our way through the story to go defect, and it's like okay. In most, in, in all but one of these circumstances, this makes zero sense. Like, in two of the let's see, 
in two of them. In one of them, everything is just going fine and dandy. There's really no incident that kicks it off. In one of them, you're actually winning the whole war that she's complaining about. It's like, oh man, it's too dangerous to stay around. It's like, lady, seriously, we just won. What are you complaining about? So do you live him judging about monkeys? You'll know when you see them. They've got... Oh yeah, dude, this lady's freaking splooshing over here. That's... <laughs> Like, oh man, them muscles and those abs, though. Oh, I gotta go get some new pants. Um, alright. Anyway. Friggin' uh, Aisha going and gossiping with the ladies here. Oh, did you see them mus muscular dudes? The advice is annoying. Weirdly enough, let's, let's see, does she realize she has oopsie moments? It, funny part is, like, if once you do all the routes, the funny part is that Vice actually turns out to be more consistent. Because uh, his actual motivation was less to be a foil the entire time, though that's, no, that's kind of a secondary motivation. Dude's literally just trying to get with Cash with the entire time. <laughs> that's his whole shtick. Like, it, in his death dialogue, in the background dialogue, and all the times where they're not around, he more or less... Oh, sweet. Free revive. Basically, just he more or less admits that that's the only reason he's doing everything, that he's, he's only acting as a foil the entire time. He's like, okay, look, I need to get between these two. I need to be the opposite of what he's doing. All right. He's like, you know, I, I got to get between these two and make sure that, you know, I do the exact opposite of this guy because I don't want to be just a copy of this guy. And I need to stop hitting that freaking button. No, 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 where uh, he literally just like tries to propose to her, and she's like, "Oh, haha, ha, that's funny," and you know, get back into your friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> even after the entire story, even after Coda, even after getting the true ending, where like it's only the the main three versus the versus every single boss in the game, <laughs> it doesn't matter. She still friend zones him, which is hilarious. Ah. <sighs> But yeah, no. The funny part is, <clears throat> even in the like weird, uh, weird artwork that they have. Uh, so they had this artwork book they put out uh, a really long time ago, where they were just putting, for some reason, they were just putting it into all kinds of different art styles. And um, anyway, so the funny part was that even in that one, he's constantly trying to look at her pants. Like I'm sure it wasn't intentionally done that way. Then again, who knows? There's also a weird moment where uh, I think it's um, I think it's Saria that's looking over, or no, 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 I think it's Iuria uh, that's looking over at Saria that's bending over and has a weird like heart over her head. Like, is she is she checking her out or what? Because she's literally like bent over in a river. She's like, oh yeah, that butt though. Like it. This is official artwork. I want to point out. Like <laughs> this was in the art book. I actually have. Um, you know, I can probably show the pictures I'm talking about here too. Okay, you know what, while everyone's walking around, let's see, let's add image. Okay, image 2, I'm just gonna show them for a sec here. Oh yeah, got a wild pumpkin head. Alright, let's see. You wanna go ahead and join us? Oh yeah, I'm gonna turn you into a fairy. Alright, pictures, where are you other pictures? And I have these saved in like 15 billion folders. Alright, where are you, hobbies? No hobbies, no, come on, please load. I know you're busy, but whatever. Alright, where is it? So first off, this one. Like here, let's go ahead and uh, fit that to screen. Like right there, the official artwork. He's like climbing a tree to look up her skirt. Really, is that what we're doing here? <laughs> so we've got that one right there. Uh, we've got whatever is going on in this situation. Like, yeah, that was uh, Saria bending over and Yuri looking at her. Like, what exactly? What's going on here? <laughs> so you know, whatever this is. Let's see what Aisha's doing. Let's see, Castro now with them and kind of bending. Uh, yeah, no, in uh. In most of the endings, uh, he uh, he decides to leave and she decides to rule. At which point, uh, Vice suddenly decides, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna get in on that. And then he's like, hey, I'm gonna be your bodyguard, and also, do you want to go hang out? Okay, no? Okay, bye. 
is more or less his ending. Let's see, did I have any of the other ones here? I think I did. Is it, yeah, they, they had a whole bunch of alternate artwork and stuff in this. Oh yeah, here's the one where everyone's looking all depressed and stuff. Like, oh man, look, it's so edgy, you guys. It's all the edge. Don't cut yourself on all that edge. Uh, da -da -da. yeah, here was the the full picture, by the way. Full flipping shebang. There we go. Like the weird chibi version. So I don't know where people got this art book from. I've seen it come up a few times, but it was just kind of a neat dealy. And they have this one in there. Uh, this is something that somebody was sharing a little while ago. This one's looking all artsy fartsy, kind of looking uh, French style, if you ask me. Anyway, so. Back to this. A while ago, a revolutionary came. They started fighting here, and my dog got lost. <gasps> dude! Dude? Dude, 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 dude. Kid, lost dog, wants dog. Is this... I think this is what Vale was talking about. We has dog. Uh... Yeah, he's saying to give him back. Okay, 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 okay. First off... Let me double check that spelling real quick, because I want to see that. Let's see, Denim leaves me cameo for next Ogre game, it's sadly an Ogre game. Yeah, they probably. That, friggin' uh, FF Online is the closest we're probably going to get. Okay, so B A C C H U S, gotcha. So, let's go ahead and make that happen. Because I know I was given some very vague hints, like, in, in order to make some of the more hidden stuff stick out more. <laughs> Okay, Trade Fodder, your new name is Bacchus. Okay. Uh, then again, we're totally tricking this kid. Yeah, it's not... Uh, there's a lot of spelling spellings for Bacchus. There we go. But the name Bacchus is acceptable. Now then, we're going to go ahead and make a unit. Okay, so let's go ahead and give Mr. Bat a unit. Yeah, both these guys are getting teams, because dude, them dudes are strong. Okay, to Bacchus, here you go. Get a couple defense fairies. Actually, yeah, he's totally going to have buff fairies, too. Yep. Okay, new unit has been registered. All right. We'll go ahead and exit. The Centurion is good in the rebalance mod. Um, apparently, uh, it sounded like uh, they gave him a bunch of good stuff. I personally have not actually tried the Centurion in that one yet. <clears throat> actually, I haven't tried the Centurion in any version yet, believe it or not. Because, yeah, yeah, this is still my first run through this game. Anyway, I need to send a team back, so... Okay, let's send you over here, I think. That's the last town for her to go to. Yeah, I wish this had a fast forward, but oh well. Can I have you retreat by any chance? So I can't do that. Yeah, he cannot retreat into the stronghold, so we're gonna have to wait a minute for Leah to go back. Then we can deploy the Bacchus. And then hopefully the kid will believe that's his dog for some reason. Which, honestly... Like, I was told that some kid wants to trade for a dog. That is pretty jacked up right there. Like, oh, kid, you lost your puppy. You, you, you know, mister, you, you lost your friggin' schnauzer or whatever. Here's a friggin' hellhound, you know. He, he murders people. He, this is definitely the, the uh, pet that your parents will approve of. Don't worry about it. It's great. Yeah, your mama will love this. So they come back. His dog has set fire to the house. <laughs> Like, great, a fire-breathing two-headed dog. This is totally what I wanted my kid to have. Great. Great plan. See no problems with this whatsoever. And apparently we've just started a, uh, a countrywide street nap. <laughs> Everybody's just camping on the freeway, you know, as you do. Yes, 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 yes. Can I please stop getting notifications? I wish that this actually had an automated notification thing, and I'm assuming, like everything else, it probably does have it, because 
so far every quality of life thing I've asked about, somebody's been like, no, you idiot, it's totally in there, you just gotta push a button. Let's see. The fairy and Marshall Black Queen stats seem much better? Yeah, no, the fairies suck hard in this. Uh, actually, the funny part is, they both suck and they scale really badly. So, the few stats they do get give them almost no damage, so expect to see like 10 to 20 uh, flying out of them the entire game more than likely. Uh, because if the numbers are anything like the rest of the series, uh, they they needed to get 500 in both Vitality and Dexterity in order to be a legitimate threat. Uh, not to mention, unlike March of the Black Queen, they cannot upgrade all the way to Sylphs, which means that they don't get their massive AoE lasers, which just made them ridiculous. I mean, it, <laughs> one of the teams that I had March of the Black Queen was literally just like a, a friggin' princess and a bunch of fairies. And it just consisted of more or less artil artillery lasers the entire time. It was like pew 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 the entire time. It's like everyone's got giant AOE lasers. And uh, yeah, pretty OP, pretty OP, all things considered. Uh, but uh, yeah, ten out of ten would recommend. Yeah, March of the Black Queen was definitely balanced more for uh, for fun than actual balance. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh. And, you know, I really loved it, though. Like, I, I really loved how, how they did that one. Because what it created was a situation where you're not... It, you have the option to win. Like, you always have the option to win your fights. You have the options to become crazy powerful. Because in this universe, you know, there's the crazy bullcrap artifacts every five feet. But that's the thing. Nobody will, will respect you. Nobody will do any of that if you end up using those methods or if you use them too much. And uh, I, I really like that. Like, I really like that as an overall thing. So that doesn't get covered in a lot of fantasy settings as much. They're like, oh, you know, he, our hero guy got super powerful, but it's like, yeah, then what? Everyone's going to view him as a complete psychopath. Like, especially in stuff like, um, you know, you see a lot of D&D uh, &D stories or stuff like that, or just any roguelike in general. Actually, it's why I like the roguelike genre so much. Because so much of it devolves into, like, okay, you know, these characters... Sure, they did what they had to do to make it, but yeah, these stories are going to turn pretty dark because uh, they like they're basically running around with a bunch of like cursed bullcrap from hell or whatever that they, you know, who knows the kind of stuff that they had to do just to survive in those settings. But yeah, the magic missile in '64 is not AOE. No, it is not. It is a single target uh, that can um, uh, that can exercise technically. But so far, that has not proved to be terribly useful in any capacity. But so far, zombies have not seemed to be much of a legitimate threat. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, they had two promotions in that one, and this one they have none. A friend, his name is Vad, he's strong and brave and crap, but he's gone right now. Have you seen him? I hope he comes back. Yeah, we have him. I wish you would have told me that before I sent him to the other side of the map. Okay, we're going to be waiting a little while longer. Actually, I don't... Uh, yeah. No, while everybody's running around. Yes, 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 I know you have a friend. But yeah, AoE, or Magic Missile in this one is garbage. So there's that. But at least they can attack, I guess. So he's gonna go that way. They've encamped. Is there... Yes. Is there automated messages? Let me check one. Help display. Let's turn off auto help. Do you port type their person? Destination display. Action named. Quick exit on. Cancel all. Adds cancel all functionality to the R button to use R on the screen. Okay. Okay. I love how they have faster than fast. Alright, there we go. There we go. Let's see, Last Remnant got a PS4 remaster. It looked pretty darn nifty, which basically the PC version of Last Remnant with a graphics upgrade. Conveniently got one of them PS4 type situations. Might have to look into that uh, going on sale at some point, because it looked really good. Just never, uh, never really got a chance to uh, really dive deep into that thing. Like it, it looked good, but I heard a lot of people complaining that it got really samey real quick. Is that true?
I should point out for anyone confused as to what the hell's going on and why I'm going scouting all the towns and everything, uh, this is a blind run, so I don't know anything aside from a bunch of vague hints. So aside from like general knowledge of the series and vague hints, I have no idea what's going on for the most part. But what I do know is that this chick asked to go meet her friends here, which I'm assuming at this point just means Saradin, which I'm assuming is the reason that he decided to stick with us, which I'm going to further assume probably locked us out of that whole all the Zenobians die ending, because I know that's a thing, because people have kind of mentioned that several times. Not to mention, YouTube keeps recommending the video to me. Like, oh yeah, all the Zenobians die in this one, like, dude. I'm trying to do a blind run, can you stop telling me? Like, no, but did you know they all die? And it's like the very first thing that comes up. Like, if you end up looking at the OB64, like, it makes an automatic page for everything that happens with that game. And, uh, like, on, on YouTube and all that. And it's like the, the first thing that's on there all the time. It's like, did you know all the Zenobians die? <laughs> uh, so you get what real quick? Um, I don't know what I was getting real quick. And I was about to go check on the kiddos again, even though they're kind of up and down here. I mean, one I can keep an eye on because she's kind of just napping over here. Another one's just kind of doing her own thing because we got to keep everyone in quarantine because there's sick flying around, some spraying around Lysol all day. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll be done here soonish. This guy has to go bring this doge over here, then he has to go visit his friend over there, but because these douchebags never can seem to fix the bridges. So that's the thing. Maybe that's why we're locked out of the bad ending. You know, there should be an alternate, like, good ending where you did everything wrong, but people still respect you because you went back and rebuilt all the bridges. See Zenobian's side? Yeah, there, it's one of the... Apparently it's kind of difficult to achieve, but apparently there's one of the, uh, one of the endings to this is you can just wind up completely pissing off all the Zenobians. And, uh, they all die in fights. So that's one of the few things that I know. <laughs> yeah, he brought the dog! Okay, this is totally it. Really, this doggy is for me. You know what? B should be the, the proper answer here, because, seriously, we're giving this kid a two-headed, friggin' fire-breathing murder dog. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Will you take good care of it? Yeah, sure, of course, let me bring it inside my highly flammable friggin' cottage. Dog has two heads, do I have to feed them both? Yeah, just go ahead and feed them any random soldiers. Found this beautiful stone. That's the evil Pedra, isn't it? Yeah. Pedra of evil. Great. <laughs> Here, have this evil rock. Thank you for this fire-breathing murder dog. Man. Friggin' heroes over here. <laughs> Where are the good guys? Where are the good guys? This is like... I don't know, 50 steps up from that sign where it's like, friggin' children left alone will be given a puppy and espresso. It's like, children will be given murder dog and flamethrower. <laughs> it's like, what, what are we doing? Uh, do you like, uh, reconstructing squads? Huh? What do you mean? I don't know what reconstructing squad is. If you mean redoing squads all over and over for the sake of you know, getting XP to kind of balance out between all of them, kind of. I like that whole idea of rotating all your units. Actually, apparently that's supposedly partially part of, um, what's it? A fell seal? Somebody told me? Like, that's one that I actually promised to uh, give a bit of a try. Uh, there was a guy that was basically offering to send you a code for the thing. If I would go ahead and, uh, do it and name all the characters after folks in the SRPG Reddit, so or Discord rather. Like, okay, that sounds like a fantastically fun thing because I've been meaning to try Fell Seal for a while and I cannot get out of my current state of utter absolute brokenness. So there's that. Like, I literally can't even afford to buy anything anybody for Christmas. At least not that I didn't in previous months, which consists of like a few baby toys and. Like a, a, a thingy I got at a craft show for my wife, but either way, we'll see, we'll see. Ah. Uh, any dang ways, hopefully Aisha here will have something new in this place. Actually, no, she won't. I know that for a fact now that I think about it. Because he's just going to go and say, hey, there's stuff here and you can probably give a child a crazy murder animal and it's a totally good idea. 
See, that means you like Last Remnant Squad, because somebody hated that part where you need to reconstruct squads. Um, alright, that's interesting. I, I don't, I don't know. Like I, like I said, I've watched a few videos of the thing, but any time that it's come on sale, I've been completely broke. Which was kind of annoying, because yeah, it, on the Vita version that was always around, that was the one that I expected to get, and it's, uh, like, it was running like 40 bucks for a good amount of time, and then it goes down to 5 bucks when it's on sale. And then at that point, I'm looking at my bank account, it's like, you've got negative $50. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> or more recently, you've got negative $800. Like, uh, dude. I really need people to stop sabotaging my business. Which, by the way, very frustrating thing uh, when you have people that are way too dedicated to, uh, well, what they, I assume, think is a joke. Like, Okay, so a lot, of, um, a lot of what I do for a living revolves around selling things online. And so, when you get somebody, like for example, you know, I have random items that I go and auction off and that kind of thing. And when you get somebody, goes through the effort of making just new accounts every day, every single day, building up a feedback for them, every single day, and then repeatedly buying things over and over, pretending to buy them for a day or two, and then a day or two later, like, oh, no, you idiot, I wasn't going to buy this. And it's the same guy with the same words over and over and over for over a month now. It's like, how much of a prick do you have to be to keep doing this over and over and over and over and over? Like, how can this be amusing? Like, trolling, I get if it's funny, but it's not even funny that just like, hey, I'm screwing with your sales and making you pay extra fees. Haha, ha, I'm such a genius. It's like the kind of thing that makes you wish you could reach the friggin' internet and shove somebody in a volcano. It's like... It's ridiculous. Exactly! Guys, ridiculous amounts of freedom. Like, I, I don't know how you do that. Like, the only reason that I have time for this, for example, is because most of the day, you know, my, my primary role is to make sure that the kids are all good, make sure that they're watched and taken care of and everything. And any work that I can get done in the meantime, Specifically, like, most of what I have to do is essentially going to be running sales in the background for different things. You know, doing any kind of writing work or audio work I can do for people that just comes up as odd gigs off, like, Fiverr or whatever. And then just, yeah, just, like, literally anything I can do to fill in the gaps. But most of the time, like, you know, with kids in the background and other stuff going on, there's not really too much I could do active work-wise during this part of the day, for example. Fair, didn't expect you alive. It's like, well, I did try super hard to get myself killed, but then I got stuck in a mountain, so yeah. To fight the Revolutionary Army and the Mosquitoes. Do not think I forgot my friends. I like to think this guy speaks like a weird South Park version of uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Sure, they'll be successful. This guy speaks like that, too. I give this to you. I found in Castle Ziggabeld a long time ago. Belonged to a soldier. What were you doing in the castle? Who is this guy? You don't just, like, wander into the castle. I will return with this, most definitely! I just noticed, why is he kind of a weird off-color to everybody else? He looks bizarrely pale. Edoutum's Mail. I guess that's an upgrade to his Thunder Chain? Let's see. Or someone hired him or her? I, I don't know. I don't know, like, he, there's some really dedicated trolls out there. Um, like, for example, when I when I used to do real estate and all that kind of thing, I, typically what, what I was doing is, you know, I'd go to a county sale or something like that, or just find other investors, and, you know, people would just have properties that they want to get rid of, and then I would just go and auction them off, so I'd make a few hundred bucks for a sale or whatever. And there were people who would go to these things, and would, like, th they would go to these sales, and spend money, like, they would actually spend money for the sake of going and bidding on these things repeatedly and then just throwing out one insult and then never saying anything to them. It's like, what was the point? Who puts this much dedication into being a dick? So, anyway, that kind of stuff comes up way more often than I'd like. Uh, anyway, right. Armor. So let's give this guy armor. Um, I'm assuming I probably don't want to give him anything super amazing, but anyway, let's see. Scale armor doesn't do anything different. Dalton's mail makes agility go up. Yeah, this feels like just a straight up upgrade for him. 
Uh, anything we got here? This makes his decks go up, sure. Alright, that guy seems pretty awesome. Thunder Chain. Wait a frickin' minute. He still has the other one equipped too, really? This is what we're doing now? Because his grappler self needs to have Thunder Chain to be a Thunder Chain? But yeah, I, I thought for a while that, there, that somebody was going and hiring these people. Because it, like, it just came up all the time. But uh, ultimately, I'm not so sure. Uh, anyway, hang on, there's a quick incident, so I gotta go check up on here, so give me a moment.
Well, hello again. All right. So, how seems all uh, well in Vanguard here? So, here's the deal. I decided to go ahead and get these remade into the stuff they should be. So we got Dry Ragamuffin over here, Colossminator, Cowlossal, and Gargantutor. Because these are all gigantic units, apparently. Now, as far as squads go, I want to have Mr. Saradin in a squad. Totally not supposed to be Saladin. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> stick you back here. Let's stick you up here. And let's stick another one of you over here. With, I guess... Uh, let's give you one squad of friggin' stabbies. There we go. So there's that one. Now then, let's go ahead and add some characters to, let's say, this squad right here. Go ahead and give you Mr. Kowlossal, as well as some reserves. I forgot to... Uh, no. I forgot to unmark him as a large unit, but whatever. Let's go ahead and uh, fix that right now, actually. Uh, yeah, so if you don't know how I'm doing this, by the way, uh, there's essentially a save editor that allows me to transform any unit that we acquire into a fairy. You know, I feel by this point he probably has some way that he knows how to do all of that. Let's see, wasn't that one? Wasn't that one? Funnily enough, uh, there's one of them that actually showed up named Tia, so we had two that were that were named Tia. And yeah, despite the fact that they are not technically supposed to be a large unit, it doesn't look like doesn't look like they're getting the penalty for being a large unit. So it might just be a visual glitch like the other thing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and assume that's the case. Uh, give her a couple of stabbies up front, and we're good to go. There we go. Exit the screen. Go back to it, and we should be good. This is a fairy. Looks like an abomination. Well, I mean, it's all just a matter of opinion, man. Okay, so. Now they're fine. Now, yeah, everything's visually fine now, so we're good to go. Now, as far as getting some of these teams trained, what are we looking at money-wise? It's 1400 bucks. Okay. Fix up the screen. Actually, now that I know what, uh, what an advanced caster acquires, Rick, what do you need for, to be one of them? Uh, do, do, do. Uh, first class, we've got... Okay, yeah, now that's unique, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're unique. Well, okay, so he can't be a sorcerer, so screw that. Uh, how is Magnus's birthday? Uh, he is 33 at this point, I believe. And it's on... Something. Uh, events. There we go. It's on that one. It's on Gmeo. There we go. It's on Gmeo. Uh, specifically, Gmeo 24th. Or Gmeo, Gmeo. I think Gmeo sounds funnier. We'll go with Gmeo 24. So, get some dudes promoted. Is okay, so it training wise? I need. Like, I want Troy back in this, because uh, I haven't seen that shield. That he, I assume he needs that shield in order to promote. So he's probably going to be a class behind right now. But, uh, I don't know, it's just, it, it feels like a real bummer that he's been s such a complete crap show lately. Because he can be good. He's He was really good. Oh, crap. Seriously, if you guys lose to this, that's just embarrassing. Like, his role was more or less just to be the tank for his entire team. And just, you know, kind of serve that way. So I should change his formation, first of all, after this. Also, wow, how does he keep missing? Bringing the luckiest healer in the world over here. Are you seeing this? What the hell? She's already... <laughs> of the five hits that he's attempted on her, she has dodged all but two of them. It's ridiculous. See, Troy can become a paladin. See, you heard Gallant Doll bonus gives a bonus based off Steve's stats. I don't know how to give that to somebody. 
Like, I don't know if it's for a doll master. I assume it's for a doll master, but I don't know. I, th I thought it was an elemental bonus based off what he does. Let's see. But yeah, a Troy, yeah, you know what? I probably would be better off just making him into a paladin. I mean, he'd lose that spear. I can probably give that spear to Leah. So yeah, that thing carried really hard at first, but now... Hmm. It's kind of a bummer. Okay, anyway. Let's go ahead and remove him then. Let's go to change class. I really wish you didn't have to go and disband their entire team uh, for the purpose of doing this, but anyway. So, to make him a paladin, he doesn't have the strength, vet, dex, or anything really to become a paladin. Can become a knight, though. And we have everything but the shield, so go ahead and pop that sucker on there. Yeah, he has a, a spear that was matching his element. That's kind of what made him really strong earlier. Form uh, unit. Pop you down in the front. Pop some fairies over here, pop one over here, pop another over here, and... Actually, no, let's... <laughs> I'm screwing this up rightly. Then let's pop you there, let's pop you over here. There we go. That looks about right. And now... Let's see, I think you... Where is that one guy? One guy, where are you? Asnabelle, there we go. We now have a weapon that you can use, so... What? How is this worse? <laughs> Whatever. You say so. Apparently everything just makes him worse for some reason. Such is life. Whatever, I'm not going to question it. Alright, you then get the big old fancy blade. Don't know why it makes you dumber, but I guess that explains Raid's whole situation. Large shield is an improvement. We get a hallowed shield that prevents him from being petrified, a situation I've never run into even once. But so well. Alright, so now let's go and get him some training. Uh, where is it? Yep. Mr. Troy, get some training done. See Dollmaster line weapon? Okay. Well. I don't know how we're going to get a doll master at this point. Um, I'm assuming if I run down the stores, I can probably find another doll headband and all that sort of situation. Probably need to do that at some point. Thrust, 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 slash, slash. Yeah, I mean, he's doing better. <laughs> I don't know why that dedicated defense class was just worse. How does that? How does that work exactly? What exactly was the point of the Phalanx if he's just going to suck? I mean, it does seem like the knight is just better defensively than the guy that's specialized in defense. It's just, I don't know, knights and paladins just seem better than everybody at everything. I don't know. Just friggin' way too strong. I mean, am I missing something here? Is there some reason that they're doing so dang well? Or are just knights and paladins kind of BS? Alright. Let's give you another go here, because yeah, if I can get friggin' two paladins going, then it's just all over. Let's see, except dragon, or dragoon maybe? I know, okay, the dragoon I do know a little bit about, because you can apparently only get one in the game. It, just because apparently you need the Fafnir, or whatever it's in-game, or this game equivalent is. Uh, let's see, it was the, the Fafnir in Night of Lotus, it was the Fafnil in, um, in the older games, because they have that weird RL translation buggery. Uh, then they have, I think they just called it uh, the Fenril in, um, in Lucked in, in the older version, and then it just became the Fenrir in, um, in the new version. Just because you can't possibly have anything consistently use the same name, who does that? But yeah, apparently you need just like the, the full usual Dragon Slayer set, as far as I understand it. 
which, uh, let's see, usually that consisted of, you know, Dragon Armor, Dragon Helmet, Dragon Shield, and the Fafner. So their usual, you know, exactly what they look like type situation. Even though they're usually a Spear class, so I guess they're a Sword class in this one. And then again, maybe you can use a Spear one-handed like you can with the uh, Phalanxes. I don't know, I don't friggin' know. We are too broke to give him training. Is there anyone we can afford to train? We're exactly one dollar short from training as well. <laughs> They're just there like, I'm sorry, we just don't want to deal with that guy. Like, look, it's going to be like one dollar more than you have. It doesn't matter how much you have, it's just always going to be one dollar more. Just so you know, you know, just we're clear on that. All right. Next up the screen now. Zero to 100 alignment. You can change Black Knight to Dragoon. Huh. Well then. Well then. This is not the screen I meant to go on. Let's give Asnabel some training. And then maybe, just maybe, down the line, he can suck less. Because that's been the problem so far. Like, he started off as a Barbarian, which I have to say feels worthless as all hell. I mean, yes, we kind of do believe strength is everything, because we need one guy that's super strong to carry the rest of this crap. But yeah, unless I missed something, there is zero point to ever use a Berserker. He just seemed just awful, just really, really bad. Like, it seemed the only time you would ever use it is for some... If, for whatever reason, you managed to have a character that had ridiculously low alignment, to the point that he couldn't even be a knight anymore... Which, given how early they come in, I'm a little bit surprised anyone would run into that situation. So, maybe they get really good strength growth or some crap, but that guy was trash, so I don't think so. Let's see, behold my hiding lance, holds with three Twizzlers. Probably would be more effective than the friggin' Berserker. <laughs> Not gonna lie, <laughs> that's exactly how much they suck. Okay. So, to my knowledge, that is everything that we would have needed to potentially go back for. Let's go ahead and save real quick. And probably start on one more fight here. So whatever this one is, I don't know what the difference is between these different fights, because... Yeah, a legendary land. Like, he said go to the castle. Which one's the castle? I don't freaking know. See, Berserks have better stat growth. Okay, fair enough. Still suck though. Do, do, do. Here's the plan, listen carefully. But yeah, no, the, the problem was I made Asnabel into one. He had unique equipment and everything, and he just couldn't win a single fight, even in training. Team Mercenary will be our headquarters. That sounds French as hell. Objective is the ruins of. Why are we going for the ruins? The ruins have to secure a road. Okay, large force is amassed. Okay, somebody said go left. They seem intent on stopping us. They're not normal soldiers, but some type of militia. Avoiding the road is a good idea, even if it costs us time. Yeah, this is a pretty obvious go north. That can't be the central division, so they must be part of the west. They're certain they're our enemy. Sounds like an option for recruitment. Actually, I wonder if this game by any chance had any influence on uh, the GBA Fire Emblem games. Because uh, the, the whole, like, recruiting some, or rather, uh, constantly keeping an eye out for recruits while fighting them. It's just, I don't know, the two feel very similar in that regard. Like, I know Fire Emblem, like, the, the old, old games came first. But it's one of these situations where I feel like around this time, specifically for the GBA ones, like the way that they did it for that one. I feel like it's a little bit more that way. So, what we're going to do... We're going to send Rick and most of the B-team up here. So, let's say Rick, Troy... Actually, Troy is going to be part of the A-team this time. It's part of the uh, the Knight Squad. So Troy and Butts, they're just going to friggin' chainsaw their way up this way. So nobody can touch the Butts. Do that. I'll send Aisha... Uh, probably... I feel like some... You know what? This road here is suspicious. They've been using roads sometimes. That might just be a waste, but we'll see. 
And we'll send Matt in to see how he handles this. Now, I want to take this first town. Like, as soon as we see them, we're going to back off. Uh, but generally speaking, my idea is more to just send up, uh, set up a uh, perimeter of sorts. And then we'll go from there. Okay. And then, so he's going to be there. Pretty much everybody else is going to be on defense. Then we're just going to try to speed around this thing. Okay, so they're already sending guys out. So you know what, let's send Serdin after these guys after all. Because I'm hoping maybe they'll drop drop a tower shield, because I think that's the only item that we're really going to... Yeah, I think that's probably the only item we're going to need to promote into one of those guys. Oh, we found a fur coat. Nice. I never did check what those books did. Send Barbara out as well. I think rather than a perimeter, we're probably just going to end up taking that town then. Fair enough. Let's see. This game, overlevel bad for alignments. Do you get it when you liberate or capture a city? Uh, basically, what you get, uh, you've got... Um, you do have your alignment, and if you're overleveled, you do end up dropping an alignment. But your, your units also tend to average out based on who's in it. So, like, if you have... Like, in this case, there's a fairy in here. It's going to boost the minimum alignment, more or less. Not really minimum. It's just like at the end of the fight, it calculates up what you were fighting against and the overall tendencies of your group and kind of averages that all out. So you don't get as many extremes. And then for taking towns, if you rescue a town, it's really good. If you uh, take a neutral town, it's really bad. And then if you lose a town, it's the worst, apparently. So, take them on to the west. These guys look... Uh, them dudes look brainwashed. So this looks legit. <laughs> oh my god. We are really under leveled here. Holy crap. Um please sleep, yeah. That's a good plan. Yep. Interestingly enough, they still need this chick to lead the team despite the fact that they've got frickin' demons up front. But whatever. Yeah, and I don't know how his alignment went down from fighting hell demons, but who knows? I mean, it's Rick. He always seems to get the worst of everything. Hmm. Yep. Do this crap. Just gonna take out the leader. Holy crap, his team's getting rocked. Okay, well, Fatal Dance is alright, I guess. Right. Right. Somehow not seeing that Vab was super worth the effort, but I guess his team is also kind of really weak right now. We'll find out. We'll find out. Either way, they're heading back to town. I think Saradin's going to be able to take care of that problem, because it's just the amount of units that's the problem. Okay, Mr. Asnabel, you join in on... Actually, you go this way. Feels weird that these woods are undefended. So, is this that monster invasion I've been hearing about? Because somebody told me that there was going to be a monster invasion at some point. Save the flying donkeys. Let's see, do you get tarot or increased stats? You don't get cards. Uh, so you don't get cards at the end of it, but um, you get... Uh, dude, holy crap, screw pumpkins. Screw pumpkins, really. Yeah, just... Uh, yeah, get nuked. Man. Yeah, this, it's getting serious at this point. So, as far as their abilities go, uh, that thing that you just saw that completely wrecked this entire team. So, I think that was like Pumpkin Assault or something. Uh, that's why I was meaning to Photoshop in a, uh, a pumpkin head with a frickin' minigun or something. Because <laughs> like, they've got two abilities. One of them lowers everybody's health by exactly 50%. Okay, fine. That's potentially devastating or worthless, depending on the situation. The other one just seems to get a normal attack like ten times in a row for some reason. Why they get that, I don't know, because that is OP as crap. Like, literally every time I've run into it, no matter how much of a level advantage they have, they get completely ruined. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't really know how we're supposed to deal with that. Okay, they've got good units. A lot of them. Okay, good. Firestorm is good. Um, 
Doesn't feel like they're keeping up super hot here. Can use the Pender again, though, so let's go for Bane. Good. Yeah, basically, that pumpkin ability is the equivalent of them using a frickin' Pendra. And they just can use it whenever. Uh, yeah, no, they, they've got two different moves. Uh, the multi-hit is its own thing, and it's basically like a Pendra, and then if you have... They, they, other times, they just lower health by half. Which, either version seems really, really strong, but whatever. Like, I mean, the, the half thing is at least balanced. Like, they can do a ton of damage, but they can't kill. And then when it comes to... Oh my god. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Uh, oof. Yeah, I couldn't even hit the retreat button in time there. Jeez. Think you'll be facing the Mighty Waffle in next tournament? Yeah, that... Congratulations on that one, by the way. Because that was really friggin' unexpected. Alright, let's uh, Rick handle this. We picked the ridiculous challenge map, didn't we? Like, this is the, the one that we weren't supposed to go for. I have a feeling. There we go, there's one more gone. Okay, even Rick's team's getting taken apart. Oof. Yeah, what is the what is the level difference here? I'm actually worried that I'm gonna have to send in Steve because uh Yeah, hang on. What is your situation here? Yeah, 17. My guys are like 13 to 15, so that'll that'll explain that one. So Rick will probably end up carrying that fight. These guys are just blitzing to take this town. Using it as a recovery, and then they're just going for the HQ. So, that's kind of the plan here. So, hopefully we still have some units after this. Let's take out their leader. Actually, just go for weakest in this case, because as long as we can take some of them down, it's something. Yeah, there hmm. would be a real good time to have some AoE going. Uh, AoE is definitely a lot weaker in OV64 than it used to be. Like, it still does a ton of damage, I just mean in general, because of formations, you end up not hitting everybody. Okay, good. They're still making progress. Let's see, as time goes on, your players will die. As time goes on, the HP and bit is really terrible. Yeah, no, I mean, I know they're garbage. That's the, the point of the run. Like, they're supposed to be absolutely trash awful. <laughs> Actually, this is the... I think I mentioned This is the fourth uh, game in a row now. I'm here on my visit. had another name, but I don't remember what it was. This is going to be that castle he was talking about, isn't it? Okay, so maybe this is the right place. Um, actually, I'm probably going to have to step away here in just a moment. So they're going to take that town and recover. I still can't believe that Saradin, who seemed overpowered as hell, ended up getting completely ruined in one, one fight. Like, that wasn't even kind of close. These guys need some taken down, but your help is needed, so just keep doing your thing. Yeah, hopefully all these guys, uh, hopefully the B team will be able to hold the town. But yeah, everybody's tankier than fairies. I don't really expect them to do very much. Uh, they're there for support and hopefully not dying. The, the plus side is, at least they can be revived without... Holy hell! We've got 200 plus, really? Um, yeah, and why is their alignment going down from fighting demons, evil dragons, and terranites? How does that work? Do they have some crazy good alignment or something? What the hell? None of this is making sense right now. But his team needs some help. Yo, there's one he leave. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot to restock on these things. The thing is, uh, we're probably going to have to spend the entire next round of budget... Uh, for just getting more heal leafs and um, just forego training entirely. Probably get more heal leafs, get more, um, you know, get everybody revived. See those demons give to charity? <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> Alright, makes sense. I mean, it wouldn't be entirely out of the ordinary for the series. <laughs> <clears throat> Everybody's the good guy the entire time. There we go, good. Oh, that guy's got another Earth Javelin, too. So he's probably going to drop it once they die. 
good to know. Let's probably give Leah that one weapon. Okay, so we can deploy one more now. Uh, in fact, let's go to organize, let's give Leah that spear. Ah, Leah, ah, ah, etc. And yes, Saradin's team, three fifths wiped out. And even beyond that, they only got one of their grunts and a fairy left from one wave. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Up items. Give you that fancy stabbins. I've been told not to use Leah for a little while, but, you know, I feel like I should. Apparently she gets better later. As does everybody, but we'll see how that goes. Two more heal leaf, less budget for training. To be fair, the, like, the, the heal leafs are really cheap. Uh, but... I just want to say, yeah, let's get Nancy out first. Let's put her on defense. Uh, the only one that I can't really use for a little while is going to be Steve. I'm trying not to use him as much as possible. Plus, I'm having him hunt down this unit in hopes that she'll will drop that bow and we'll know what kind of bow they're using, at which point I can hopefully promote them into this Diana thing. Alright, come on, Rick. You got this. You got the touch. It's inappropriate! It'd be nice when we go to sleep, there we go. Good, Super Demon's almost dead. Lost the Frontline Fairy, who I kind of meant to heal up, but whatever. They're doing alright, they're still winning. As long as Rick's getting levels, they're alright. So you need extra one goth previously. So you see too many Dragoons and... Yet. Yeah. If you've ever played Ogre Battle Hard Type, it's a little bit hilarious how you know how there were griffins everywhere. Like they end up, they end up having a thing where they're uh, they end up getting their move, their big AOE move much earlier. Did you freaking see that? Um, yeah, they get their big AOE move way earlier. And holy dang, like if you accidentally get a crit on a griffin, that party is dead. Because <laughs> so many times they're showing up on the second line, so. Or, on the first line, rather. So if they get knocked back into the back line, they just do a party-wide just sweep, and that's it. Yeah, let's have you go take a bit of a rest here. Actually, speaking of that, I, hang on. I need to step away for just a moment here, so give me a minute, and I'll be right back.
Alrighty, and I'm back. Uh, yeah, probably gonna have to cut it off pretty soon here. But anyway, so to answer your question, Mr. Buckle, uh, no, I have not finished Hard Type as of yet. So I'm actually still pretty early on in that one. But the fights definitely take a lot longer. So I kind of wish it had come out on the PS1 version, but, you know, playing it on PSP works out just... Or not PSP, well, I guess PSP too. But uh, playing it on the Vita works out just fine, because you can just put it in suspend mode whenever. But, uh, yeah. It's definitely way more difficult. Um, mostly just because of the whole rotation thing. You end up having to dedicate a lot more units to a lot more places. So you tend to have a lot more of, like, relatively realistic uh, rotating your front lines and things like that. So I personally love to see that kind of stuff. Like, anytime there's a strategy game that has actual logistics in place, just it makes me unusually happy. So I, I would just adore that kind of stuff. Like, it's funny because they took out one of the other logistics features, uh, which is when you would previously have to go pay for deployment costs and things like that, uh, just because it would have been near impossible doing it that way. Uh, but you don't get a daily income anymore either. So it, it basically uses the same financial formula as this, where your money comes from based on uh, how well you did in the fight. So it's that kind of thing. But uh, yeah, hard type is pretty baller. These guys are almost gone. Bird guy should be hopefully kind of worthless here. Yeah, Katri you know what? Katrina's team is alright. Her healing is absolutely insane, so they can at least hold it together pretty well. Like, if nothing else, they can work pretty decently as support plank. So yeah, in hard type, there's no daily income. It basically uses the same, like I said, it uses a lot of the systems that OB64 ended up using. Uh, just because the daily income thing is really abusable. So if you do really well in the fight, you end up getting a better bonus at the very end, which means you can get more stuff. Uh, it should be noted that you can also buy a lot of lower tier items in that, in, uh, the, uh, that mod. So like, for example, battle axes and helmets are available from the very, like, I think, like second map or something. Uh, the items are still randomized, but a lot of the crazy OP stuff ended up getting, um, getting nerfed pretty severely. Like, I know the uh, princess no longer gives herself her friggin' bonus, so she does, in fact, a ridiculous amount of times. Um, not to mention her stats are way lowered. Um, I think the vampire got boosted because it was absolute garbage before. Ooh, jeez. Dude. I mean, like, you tried, but god dang. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it, it, basically, the thing is, revives are, like, 20 grand. So if you find a temple, good, it's the normal price, but if you try to buy a revive item, uh, they're about 20 grand as opposed to their previous 10 grand or so, or uh, 2 grand or so. Okay, she's got chickens, oh crap, oh crap, oh no, it's all over. <laughs> uh, did I put a blessed shield on anyone? No. Okay, this is ridiculous right now. Holy crap, these things suck. Holy crap. Screw all y'all. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. All members of the units led by Butts and Petrified are shooting back. Dude! That is some bull crap. <laughs> that is complete horse crap right there. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, Butts is getting that blessed shield. That's for sure. Oof. I mean, presumably once they get back... Wait, how the hell do they get back to HQ? Are Do they all count as eliminated now? Like, what's, what's their deal? Um... Right, so... The hell do I do about this? Yeah, uh... I don't have any friggin' anti-petrification items. I don't use this on them, do I? No, that doesn't even work on them. You know, I actually could use one of those on Saradin. Get him back in the fight. There we go. Uh, probably save another one if somebody needs it. But yeah, Butts was my strongest guy by far. 
So that's not great. Yeah, uh, so uh, revive stones, I don't have. So if there's a shop, I might be able to buy some. Uh, right now I'm kind of just relying on... Well, Troy, I think he has his shield, so he should be able to beat these guys. Yeah, you know what? Just attack the leader. He is immune. I guess they still do damage, but... Oh, don't even start with that crap. Come on! Come the hell on right now! It's like friggin' no block rate whatsoever. She's just there like, yeah, no, block, block, block. Don't care. Have block, wool bull crap. Uh, so yeah. Right now, Troy's the one with that uh, anti-petrification shield. So... I mean, if he can beat that the leader chick, then they're all good to go. That's what's frustrating about this, because... Yeah, okay. I should have just left. Oh, man. Yeah, that's... Oof. Let's pretend that's not OP. Okay, whatever. We can still get him back in the fight. Um... I don't even know why I let this fight happen. Okay, they're dead. Good to know. Too many to go revive in items. Uh, yeah, they were really expensive, so I didn't really think I would need it. Hmm. Question is, can Katrina... Okay, let's do a little bit of science here. Do they have an anti-petrification because if anybody has it, it'll be her. So let's see what happens. Because right now those guys are relatively decently damaged, so... Like, if I have somebody that can counter petrification, that'll be a thing. Man, we're just... This is easily the handiest defeat we've gotten so far. Like that, Right now, the strongest team we've got is Rick. And he's down to... Just his back row. Okay, we might have to go straight through these guys after all. I'm not even going to risk him going north unless the healers are able to take care of that situation. I think I might even have to leave this on a cliffhanger because I really do have to get going here. So you probably got like four minutes that I can still... Right, come on, healers, please. Please pull it off. Thing is, I can't take... I don't think I can put a shield on Steve. I don't know if he would just get insta-killed by going and doing that fight. Right, come on, please. You guys. Like, it's all you now. It's all you. It's just all on these little grunts to beat this chick. Come on! Stop! getting a million turns. Yeah, so she didn't unpetrify them. What is the deal with petrify? Do you seriously have to spend that much to get them back? I really hope not. That's horrifying. Okay, yeah, well, either way, Rick hopefully will be the front line here. Gonna save the other altar for him. Like they're they're doing all right. They're doing pretty good pack damage. Um, I don't believe I've got anyone on stores right now. And yeah, we don't even slightly have enough money to even go buy a revive anyway. But if we have one, I guess we can find a way to make it work. I wish Abyss would actually put these stupid things to sleep. Okay, healer got petrified. That's good. They don't seem to be heal or they don't. Hmm. I don't think they've got items. I should probably check. That is terrifying. Yeah. Okay. So Amanda's eliminated. Now, what is your deal? Do you have items? Please tell me you don't. Oh, they've got plenty of items. Never mind. And Amanda gets engaged anyway. I think they won't use it until she's on, like, sub-50% health or something. It's 
so I guess we'd have to rely on a team crit to be able to pull that off. Hmm. I mean, she's like, she's rolling straight in for the HQ, too. So, if nobody can beat her, then we're screwed. And it's just a rip run right here. All members of the team are petrified. So, one thing I can't help but notice is that yet, yeah, she's not healing for some reason. So they're probably going to heal right after this, I assume. They're also not taking three rounds, so there's no chance to use a Pendra on them. Okay, she's about to nap, though. That's our chance. Do I have anyone that I can send up there? Leah? Yes. You are the hero we friggin' need right now, so she is in the perfect position to, to take advantage of this. So they're probably gonna take a nap right on that bridge, chasing after Treda. Yeah, as long as she keeps going for this stronghold, we should be fine. And there they go, napping. Surprisingly, they haven't brought in that other chick. Alright, come on. Deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just go for their leader. Excellent. Excellent. Still no idea why his alignment keeps dropping. After chapter 18, you can use Leela and do as much as he wants. Well, I don't even know why I'm not necessarily using her, but for now, whatever. So, they've got a pretty strong line there. I'm going to pull him back to play defense, because ideally I want to be able to push back up through here. Uh, Steve's the only way to probably do that at this point. Okay, go for their leader. Come on. They're in the worst possible position to pull this off right now. I mean, at least... At least it didn't go so bad. Like, they can still do this. I'm, I'm not sure if they only have... Maybe power fruits or something on them. Yeah, they they healed. We're gonna screw that. She's back up to full health. So, never mind on that. So we've almost taken that town to the north. Hopefully they'll have an item or something. Let's go for leader. These guys would be absolutely worthless if we could attack them on the site. Oh, come on! With your crazy speed, are you kidding me right now? That was ridiculous. <sighs> Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit pissed off about that, because they were sleeping, they got ambushed, and they were still just fine. <sighs> okay. So they took that town. Do you have a shop? They have a huge army. Are you with the West? No, we're not. Don't bring us any more of your problems. Yeah, okay. Says the guy who's got friggin' chickens flying around petrifying people. This town doesn't have a shop by some chance that I miss, does it? No, it doesn't. What do they have? Yeah, some guy in a field. Oh yeah, they're just telling us about that castle thing. So yeah, 
Uh, is this Ogre Mouse 64 hardware? No, this is normal mode for sure. Uh, but yeah, no. Anyway, so I have to cut it off now. I'm gonna take to leave it on a cliffhanger, but either way, not uh, bad timing. So, I'll go ahead and save Stater right here and see at this exact spot, uh, whenever it happens. You know what? Actually, screw it. Later today. I was gonna do some, uh, Scrooge run, but I really want to see how this keeps going, so we'll just do that later. Alright, take care. Bye.